One thing for sure this morning, as we try to appropriate uh, something helpful from the first Palm Sunday parade to our lives in these challenging times. They are alive. Just a couple of years back, during the pandemic, I was recalling this week that there were no choices for public gatherings, therefore no parades, no protests to speak of, except those who didn't want to wear a mask. Today, parades and marches of protest and support are everywhere. The risk of being hurt, assaulted, arrested, uh, even as increasing as, as the world seems to be turning upside down on itself in uh, all over the world, in Haiti and, and still in Syria and especially in the Gaza Strip and in Ukraine and in the, this country. Lots of unrest, lots of, lots of uh, debate sometimes done well and oftentimes not so well. They're everywhere. Lines get drawn in the sand in a moment's notice and then you have a fight. Even now it's spring break in Florida with all the booze and the pent up energy, tempers flare, guns get drawn and another youth is killed. If you watch TV news, there's the choice we make between being safe and at the same time following the one who gives us hope for our lives, Jesus the Christ. There's a big difference as I feebly tried to point out to the kids this morning. I don't think I ever got their attention and when I thought I did, I didn't. But they're beautiful and lovely and, and uh, a joy to be with. The crowds that day following Jesus were desperate, passionate about walking with Jesus, intent on touching the hem of his clothes, the crowds wanting to find some hope for their lives. They had heard about him and his healing powers, about the compassion and love. They would risk it all to even get a glimpse of Jesus. Many of them did take great, take great risk to be in Jesus' presence, to touch him, to hear him preach, to receive his healing. They also know firsthand about the corrupt empire represented by the other parade going on in Jerusalem at the same time, led by none other than Pontius Pilate, riding into Jerusalem on his big horse, his stallion, and with soldiers all around him and his entourage of power. In some ways, the parade around the world are like the parade following Pilate and the lure of the empire. Who was Pilate anyway? Pilate was the governor of Judea, the governor Comptroller, the supreme judge, the commander in chief, all wrapped up in one. Where did he live? He lived in Caesarea Maritima, 
the official palace of, pa of Pilate between current day Joppa and Tel Aviv. Why did Pilate come to Jerusalem? He came for the festival of tabernacles, just like everyone else. Pilate represented the empire with his status of wealth and authority, and like other leaders of the empire, he was a politician. He had to be concerned with his constituents, especially the religious leaders of the time. If you want to know what politics looks like, reread that text from Matthew 27 that I read this morning. The exchange between Pilate and his wife about what to do. How much water did he need to wash th this challenge, this issue out of his, his life? Jesus had been telling his disciples for a long time that he had to make this trip to Jerusalem as well. At least the disciples should have known this. Jesus only tells them three different times that we know of that he will be killed and resurrected. Now, I don't think they understood the imagery necessarily well enough, or they were in so much denial as, as we discovered they are. Three gospel writers report Jesus telling the disciples three different times of his death and resurrection. In Matthew, in chapter 16, before the transfiguration trip up the mountain, in chapter 17 in Galilee, and then again in chapter 20 before their trip to Jerusalem. While Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples aside by themselves and said to them as they were on their way, see, we are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised. Can we even imagine, even imagine Jesus knowing all this and still riding a little donkey into the city? Yes. Why? Because he's Jesus. In Matthew's gospel, he lives out his mission to bring relief to the oppressed and hope to the hopeless. And there were millions, hordes of poor people, many, many, many oh, who were ill. The health system, the health care was almost non-existent. Between his entry and into Jerusalem on his Palm Sunday donkey, Jesus tells a variety of parables. He denounces the religious leaders. He tells of the destruction of the temple. And in Mark's gospel, he does the worst thing of all, cleanses the temple. The act of protest is seen as one of the most offensive acts he takes, at least offensive to the commerce carried out by the temple leaders. He messed with their money and they were offended to the core, offended to the point of arresting him and bringing him before the authorities. Of course, a lot takes place between Jesus' triumphant entry into the city and the text we read this morning in Matthew 27. Most of these events occur during what we call Holy Week, which for me starts today. 
it goes without saying in these times of worship here in the sanctuary and for others at home on Facebook Live that worship at home on your own, trying to stay true to the flow and chronology of the events between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday is difficult. At Grace, we will hold a Monday Thursday service this th coming Thursday at seven o'clock here in the sanctuary, live stream to the rest of the congregation. But Jesus was also there on Good Friday. After his arrest, he is brought before the authorities, and thus we find this encounter in Matthew 27 between Jesus and Pilate. What role does Pilate play in this plot by the authorities to stop Jesus? They wanted to stop him from messing with their money to end Jesus' ministry in the world. Is he an active accomplice to the religious leaders' plot to kill Jesus? Or is it possible that he would defend Jesus? We know that many of Jesus' followers would want Pilate to release Jesus to them, not Barabbas. But that's not what happens. It's amazing. Jesus, Pilate follows the normal ritual of releasing a prisoner, but not Jesus. Did you notice Matthew says in verse 24, that so when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather than a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I'm innocent. I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Just like some politicians we know. Pilate gives in to the people and does nothing to prevent a trumped up charge against Jesus. He washes his hands. My friends, how do we respond to the opportunities we have even today? March 24, to keep our commitment to Jesus by speaking up about our faith, about the power of Jesus' presence in our lives. How do we avoid the temptation to which Paul gave into, to wash our hands of our relationship with Jesus when people push back against our faith, to give in to public pressure, to not put our spiritual life before the world, to become an accomplice to those who cast doubts upon the strength of God's love and healing in these times. I pray that you will find strength and hope and encouragement in following this one we follow to Jerusalem, even to the tragic events of his life during Holy Week. Then when we gather next Sunday, March 31st, Easter Sunday, or around our TVs or computers or smartphones, remember the ultimate outcome of God's great act of raising Jesus to new life. May it be so for you and for me. Amen.